If you are looking for a city centre street that reflects the changes in Leeds architectural styles over the last 200 years, then you should look no further than King Street, with its mix of red brick, Bermontoff's faience, terracotta, brutalism and even the Leeds look, which started to appear in the 1980s. This short street has it all, and in this video we will discover the history of its buildings, and even what stood here before. We begin at number one. Looking at this beautiful and impressive building, now offices, it is hard to believe it started out as one of the many warehouses built in the Wellington Street area. In 1815, business in Leeds was booming and the town was spreading out into its surroundings. It was open land south of Park Place at this point. King Street was yet to come, but within two years Wellington Street was laid out and King Street and Queen Street were added, forming a rectangle and available for the construction of new properties. The railway stations built on the south side of Wellington Street between 1846 and 1854 accelerated these developments, taking advantage of the new transport connections. George Corson took over his brother's architectural practice in 1860 and the corner building of number 52 Wellington Street and numbers 1 and 3 King Street was one of the first he designed, in a career which culminated in the Grand Theatre, municipal buildings and the school board offices in the late 1870s. Leeds is synonymous with the growth of the textile industry and many of the buildings in this area were introduced and utilised by manufacturers and merchants involved in the sale of cloth. Multi-storey warehouses were also built on the opposite side of the junction of King Street. This photograph from 1939 shows the Linen Thread Company occupying the corner of King Street and Wellington Street, with F.J. Williams, tobacconist and newsagent, open for business below. Interestingly, the newspaper advertisements include a headline, Hitler's War Confession, an indication of what Leeds people were facing at that time. Today at the corner it is no longer the home to a newsagent and in fact, whilst a good proportion of the building remains, significant changes have taken place both inside and to the exterior. To the back of these buildings once stood the 4th White Cloth Hall, built in 1868 by the North Eastern Railway Company, another indication of the significance of the textile industry in this area in the past. This photograph was taken in 1921 as the remaining section of the building was being demolished. The cloth hall covered a considerable space at the corner of King Street and Quebec Street. Today, on part of it, stands 12 King Street, a building from the 1980s, recently redeveloped and including what is known as the Leeds Look, a modern architectural style using red brick and grey slate roofs used for public and commercial buildings in the centre of Leeds. The first examples began appearing in the 1980s with the goal of harmonising new buildings with older brick buildings surrounding them. For many years, following the demolition of the 4th White Cloth Hall and prior to the construction of 12 King Street, the site contained a collection of wooden buildings used as the sorting offices of the General Post Office. It was an unusual neighbour to one of the finest examples of terracotta work in Leeds, the Hotel Metropole, which opened in 1899. This superb looking building was designed by Charlie Connan and Charlie, in red brick and terracotta, loosely designed in the French Loire taste. A remarkable feature is a large stone cupola taken from the cloth hall which formerly occupied this site and added to the roof line. This has to be one of the best looking buildings in the city. For a short time, the Metropole was also accompanied by a second hotel on King Street at the corner of the junction with Infirmary Street. When Goodbard House opened in 1905, at least part of it was called Hotel de Ville 
In the Leeds Street Directory of 1913, its manager was George Philip Wood. There were also two restaurants at ground level at that time, one run by Miss Mary Annie Rulston and the other by Miss Mary Annie Hebden. It seemed strange they both had the same forenames. By 1917, as the First World War progressed, the hotel is no longer listed in the street directories and it seems that it had closed. By the 1920s, the upper floors had become offices, as they are today. The Grade 2 listing for the building states that the King Street entrance retains its wrought iron seaweed scrolled overthrow and the oriel window above has the erased name Hotel de Ville beneath. I've looked closely but I can't spot it. Perhaps it was removed in recent transformations to the building. The polished Peterhead granite to ground floor, sandstone above and wrought iron detail certainly makes the building stand out, which the same can be said of the building directly opposite. Constructed in 1910 for the Atlas Insurance Company to be used as offices, Atlas House was designed by architects William Perkin and George Bulmer. The striking building was faced with beautiful white marmo faience, made nearby in Bermontoffs, with hints of pale gold and green hidden amongst the tiles. Positioned above the door is the symbol of the original company residing in the building, a sculpture of Atlas struggling underneath the weight of the world. It is carved in white faience marmo material from Leeds Fire Clay Company, a way of imitating white marble. Round arch windows are adorned with masks on the keystones to represent races of the world. For the first 60 years of its existence, Atlas House seemed to be waiting for a next door neighbour to join it that matched its size and grandeur. The space at the junction with Park Place being only partially taken up by the small offices of the News Chronicle. Number One Park Place stood adjacent, a large and impressive Georgian building, in keeping with many of the others on the attractive street. In the 1970s this was replaced by a new, arguably less attractive building, which spanned the corner. This has recently been further developed to create what is now known as City Point at 29 King Street. It can be easy to look back and criticise planners when we compare new buildings with old, especially now as the city centre is thriving. It seems odd that older buildings were allowed to be torn down and new ones built that are arguably less attractive. However, we must remember that in the 60s, 1970s and early 80s, the city centre was in a relatively poor shape and in need of regeneration. That being said, it is incredible that a building such as this one should have been demolished and lost for posterity. This impressive building once stood at the corner of King Street and Quebec Street, which was occupied by the firm of G. H. Robertson Co., manufacturer and merchants of textiles. It is worth pointing out that they had in turn replaced the original Leeds Infirmary, which had stood at this spot. Between 1980 and 1983, a collection of large buildings known as Cloth Hall Court were constructed on the site. In 2007, this building, Cloth Hall Court Building C, was purchased by the property company Bruntwood, who refurbished it at a cost of £2.3 million. It is now known as Number 14, King Street. The oldest buildings that exist on King Street are Numbers 5 and 7. Perhaps less flamboyant than some of their neighbours, these two have witnessed all the changes taking place over the last 200 years. Number 5 was once the home of Jowett and Sowery, who have been associated with the city since 1888, providing office equipment amongst other things. Alongside is the building now known as Kilkenny House. At one time it was the home of Tappan Tootles, 
shop fitters and office stationers. However, for much of its life it has comprised of shared offices. Even in this photograph from 1951 you can see the upper floor offices are being used by other tenants. In the Leeds Directory of 1913, it was listed as the offices of three separate manufacturers merchants, two worsted manufacturers, a solicitor and a consulting engineer. Last but not least is Bank House at 27 King Street. A superb example of brutalist architecture. Leeds has some really impressive examples of brutalism, although some have already been lost and others are under threat. In the latter half of the 1960s, and partly as a result of the Great Train Robbery of 1963, British banks attempted to limit the movement of money around the country by establishing regional bullion centres with reinforced basement vaults. The Bank of England embarked upon a programme of rebuilding their key branches in Manchester, Birmingham, Newcastle, Bristol and Leeds. The Leeds branch was constructed between 1969 and 1971 to the designs of the Building Design Partnership. The design was exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1968 and was constructed on the site of a warehouse of 1862 that had been designed by Cuthbert Broderick and which was demolished in 1967. Leeds County Borough's planning requirements stipulated that the height of the building should not exceed that of the neighbouring streets and be a maximum of four to five storeys. They also required the incorporation of an elevated pedestrian walkway into the design, which was anticipated would connect with other developments and walkways in the city centre. We can see a section of the walkway in this photograph from Park Row taken in 1988. At that time it linked the Bond Street Centre, which later became part of the Trinity, to Infirmary Street. However, the walkway scheme never got as far as Bank House, and in fact the walkway around Bank House is one of the last remnants. The northeast corner has already been removed due to safety concerns as the building aged. BDP's initial design for the building was cubic, with the walkway inset behind columns, but this was felt to create a dark level, so an alternative design of an inverted ziggurat was instead produced. The bank occupied the basement to second floor levels of the building, whilst the top two floors were let as commercial office space. The branch closed in the late 1990s, but the building still remains in partial use. The main entrance was originally recessed, but the recess has since been infilled with modern glazing and a new lighting canopy added above, which sits underneath the first floor deck. Having been a one-way street for over 50 years, recent changes to Access City Square have seen King Street return to two-way traffic. There is a new bus stop outside the Metropole Hotel. Pavements have been adapted and reshaped. All subtle changes in a thoroughfare that has seen many developments over the years. There were plans to develop Bank House in which the last remnants of the walkway were likely to go and more floors added. But these have been shelved for now. In a thriving city we have to accept change as a constant but we have also to hang on to our past. It is lovely to see so many old and important buildings thriving in one small street. Hopefully, they will continue to be cherished for future generations to enjoy. If you have enjoyed this video, there are many more to catch up with on the Geography Juice channel. Thank you for watching.